Some days target communication in association with 63% of non-committed voters present a live reasoning with the President of the United Independence Congress, UIC, Mr. Joseph Patterson, with host Baba Tunde, date October 31, 2021, time 1 p.m. Jamaica time. Join us on Facebook at Safari Baba Tunde, on YouTube at Tunde Stargate Communications, and on Twitter and Instagram at Nation Awake Now. Don't miss it. So we're going to start with this piece of message and then we uh, return to um, keep it going. today's objective is just to you know have a good reasoning yeah um fruitful and and yeah so you would express in your best way um things that you have vision over the past months that i have been in depth listening to you um we'll see where that you have expounded on your vision in a clear and precise manner. At Tunde's Target Communication, um, we do things uh, different, not necessarily that we're trying to um, put down anyone else or show ourselves, you know, on any high pedestal. Of, but we, we do things um, differently. We do things with a particular premise of rightness. So. Today's objective, just an iron vibe, just reasoning. Anyhow, you feel like is the best way for put grass the message. Um, we always like to do our things in our part of our vibes and so. Yeah, man, no problem. If you so, if, if you feel that vibe, yeah. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm comfortable with the language either way. But um, what I want to get out of this is for you to make sure you get what you want, whatever you want to hear, whatever you want to ask. Mm-hmm. Whatever is of interest to your audience, yes. um, I'm here to to meet the needs of your audience today. So you know what your audience want to want to hear about. So ask the questions, and I will, you know, uh, clarify them in in brief. The vision that we have for Jamaica, we being the members of the UIC, mm-hmm. we call ourselves Uniters because we want to unite the nation. And our name says it, you know, we're, we're a united group of independent thinkers who are opposed to the colonial, divisive, partisan system of governance which allow a minority to take away the rights of the majority. Excellent. And so, you know, our goal is to liberate the Jamaican people and empower the Jamaican people mm-hmm. um, with two things, you know, their individual liberty and the personal responsibility. 
And to achieve that, we have to get rid of the colonial system of governance. Okay. You know, so a part of our mission is to create a non-partisan constitutional republic uh, where we no longer have a queen from a foreign country or even a queen locally. We don't want, we don't believe in monarchies. We believe in sovereignty of the individual. All right. So I'm going to ask you to hold on to that. All right. Excellent. Um, welcome again, everyone. Thank you all for joining in. Um, whether you're seeing this on Facebook, um, Twitter, IG, um, whatever the platform it is, the UIC website, Tundas uh, Target Communication, YouTube channel. Uh, this is our way of um, sort of allowing the UIC to expound on their vision um, and to get Jamaicans on a wider scale involved. 63% uh, of us stayed away from voting for the People's National Party or the Jamaica Labour Party in the 2020 general elections. And so um, we have more than a mass amount of individuals um, to generate the change necessary in government. Sure. I guess one of the things your listeners or viewers might want to know is that the vision of the UIC is to create a Jamaica that brings out the best in all its people. And that's very important because the current system that we have in place, as you know, have brought out the worst in our people. It has divided us into two tribes fighting for scarce benefits and spoils. For the last 77 years, the British, before they left Jamaica, were very instrumental in ensuring that we had a partisan system that kicked off fully in the 1940s. And in 1944, we had our first election where we um, elected one of two major parties that were sponsored by the colonial masters. They had effectively by then gotten rid of the Marcus Garvey party and taken over the agenda. And what that did was to shift our focus from the colonial masters and colonialism and what that meant and how that was robbing us of our heritage, of our wealth. They shifted our attention from the colonial masters, shifted our attention from the external parties that were fighting against us. And they taught us to fight against ourselves. And so from 1944 until 1962, 18 years, we perfected the game of fighting each other. And when our colonial masters saw that we did it so well, that we had bought into this idea so effectively, then they gave us independence, which is a fake independence, but they gave us that fake independence in 1962. And then now they made it, um, what do you call it now, permanent for mm -hmm. us to have this model of government where we'll spend the next 50 years um, fighting each other uh, for scarce benefits and spoils. And that has landed us where we are today. The UIC wants to change that. Okay. We want to give Jamaica a new opportunity to look in a different direction and have a system of governance that reflects who we are as opposed to who our colonial masters want us to be. On Thursday, Rado, I heard you um, during your interview on Press FM with um, Mrs. Lawrence and um, Pastor. There is there's um some excellent comments um thereafter. Um I think it was um another session that you expounded um greatly on it. But I, I start to hear people are yearning now for it to move from this stage that we are now. So we are in the communicative stage, um, using the different tools and platforms and so on. So we start here people talking about, you know, moving it from there now. So you move from your computer to get into the practical component. Um, that is something that we're going to touch on. So please um, prepare. Give us a little, you know, foreground, as I would say, background for some in terms of your experience, you know, growing up, your your general experience, you know, growing up. Um and, and, yeah, you know how best to say that, so get with that. 
Well, um, like most Jamaicans, I was born to a single mother, a poor single mother uh, in Kingston, uh, in a place called Blake Road. Um, I grew up in a, a one-room house, um, about 12 by 12, mm -hmm. uh, two windows, one door, and an outside bathroom, a little bit of space when you step off the bed, um, a chimney under the bed. Yes. You know the usual, um, thing. Uh, in a man. <laughs> So, you know, it was, it was, it was, you know, it was a special period of my life. I mean, where you, you got to, you got to school with a, a cup of mint tea or lime leaf tea, um, some Cersei tea. Well, I, I used to try to avoid that one. And a slice of bread or two with mm -hmm. some, some butter on it. And, and that's it. You you walk to school. I used to, by then I was living, I was living at that point, you know, in, in terms of more memories. I yeah. have a place called um, Rainfield Drive, close to Washington Boulevard and Malign Road. So I'd walk from there all the way up to um, Don Robin Avenue. Mm -hmm. That's close to Hudson Spring Road there. And and I went to school at Don Robin Primary. Okay. No, I was a very, they used to call me, I'm one of those first you call a pretty dunce, you know, so I was supposedly handsome, but <laughs> I really couldn't do much in terms of like math. I didn't know anything in math and um, English. I could my writing was crap too. Yeah. And, uh, but I was I was I was a good reader. My grandmother taught me to read from I was three years old. Uh, she, she she made a little agreement with me that if I read the headline of the newspaper, then she would give me the comic strip. So that was quite instrumental in making me a, a reader at an early age. So I mm -hmm. do a lot of reading. I read newspaper, I read books, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, um, Napoleon Hill, uh, you know, Napoleon Bonaparte. I read those biographies. I used to love reading those things as a kid. Yeah. Uh, when I was when I was about nine or so, I was doing a bus stop selling. So I used to sell every evening. You know, a little tree on a little, a little um, crate, and a little crate, and a little DNG crate. Mm -hmm. um, back in the days, and you have that, and a little patty can. And I used to sell bubble gum and and sweetie and biscuits and cigarettes and all those things under a bus shed at um on Washington Boulevard. Yes. Uh, you know, through I I didn't do very well. I failed the common entrance twice, and then I failed the technical entrance as well. So. I was not a stellar student at that point in time. Mm -hmm. At age eleven, um, I had met my father not too long, not too long ago, and I I saw that he was living a very opulent life. My mother was living a poor life. He was living a more opulent life. So I ran away from home and went to live with him. Wrote my mother a little letter and tell her that you know she has done all she can do and it's now time for him to pick up the slack. So I went to live with him. Mm -hmm. um, he he saw me more as a free labor so i spent most of my time doing you know back breaking work for him for nothing okay. except I did, I did get shelter and stuff like that and food uh, and food you know well and that was a challenge sometimes but anyways food and, and shelter okay uh and uh so during that time at my father's house i the the the, the thought at that time was that listen this guy can't do much with him brain so Let's send him to a school where he can do something with his hands. So they enrolled me at a dumping ground called Spanish Town Secondary, where you put all the, the Dunn's children. So I went to Spanish Town Secondary. But when I heard them say that, something triggered in my brain. And so I decided that I'm not going to be Dunn's anymore. So I, I, had, I had two stepsisters at the time. They were very, very bright. Um, doing, they got government scholarships. So I just kind of borrowed all of their books secretly and hide away. And start to study. So 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 hold it a little now, uh, yes. Sir P. Um, the their assessment of you is actually was started the fundamental foundation on which now you have start initiate a change within your own life, right? Yes, yes. All right. Um, I hear you. You know the earlier part of the thing you also say that it was you know opulent, but we have enough ones who have a listen. But that word, they don't have a search, which is good. <laughs> so, okay. just, you know, sort of break it down a little, sort of chat. 
Yeah, man. So, so he compared to compared to my mother, he had a very rich life. They have like we had satellite dish, we had um, Delco as they call it, which was you know generator to when other people don't have light, we have light. And which era he was living in? He was living in a place called Meadowvale. Okay. Uh, which is over in um, Saint Catherine, and um, so you know we have nice manicured lawn and you know individual bedroom and living room and kitchen and all the nice things you can think of in a nice decent home mm -hmm. you know compared to where i'm coming from which was a little one room situation and an outside bathroom so so that was a an experiential shift for me to see a different way of life yeah. i also noticed that my stepsisters you know when they came home from school they had you know um homework and you know, their mother, my stepmother, a lovely lady, she paid attention to their lesson and to the work. And, you know, so I said, wow. Now, my father, he thought, you know, he wanted a very bright son because I'm, I'm his only, his firstborn son. Oh, okay. And, um, and so, you know, he was very disappointed that I wasn't, you know, academically savvy. Gifted. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I wasn't really doing anything much. So he just kind of gave up on me. In oh. fact, he wanted to pay for me to go to, to, to high school, you know, to just get me in through the back door and, you know, pay for me. But the argument that was put forward was that why are you going to waste time, you know, waste money and stuff? Why well, can't I do much, you know? I can't really learn. I'm, 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 I'm not have way tech, you know? Yeah. So so I, I went to Spanish Town and when I got there, I made a resolution that I was going to change this. I'm going to change myself. And I started to recruit my fellow students and say to them, listen, you don't have to accept this, you know. You don't have to accept that you are less than, that you are a reject, you know. And so I tell them to hold up them head and start behave like the high school children. So we, we went and look, what am I do? Let us do the same thing. Them have drama club, let's create our own drama club. Them have science club, let's create our science club. Them have student council, let's have our student council. And so we start organizing ourselves mm -hmm. and, you know, we start studying. We now have competitions, you know, who, who is the best in maths, who is the best in English, who is the best in science. And we start to have all of these internal competition that we just create among ourselves. And from that process, a uh, magnificent shift happened in the school. The whole behavior, the whole consciousness of the school changed. We entered um, school challenge quiz for the first time. They had something called a... National Secondary School Challenge Quiz. The first time they had it, mm -hmm. we were in grade ten at the time, and yeah. I led I led the team, and we won nationally. We went, we won right across the country. Every school we met, we, we beat them as grade ten students. And we're playing, we're playing against senior students, right? And we're just grade ten, and uh, so the whole the whole atmosphere changed. I became head boy, student council president, drama club president, science club president. Um, uh, debate team captain, quiz team captain. And so I really had a very successful period between 1984 and 1988. And um, I passed, you know, my subjects. And then I was very fortunate. I got a second chance you now to go to St. Andrew Technical High School. You know, now that I finish stats, mm -hmm. there's this program at, sorry, I spin it, finished Spanish Town. There's this program at stats. Well, well, I, well, I know, Sir P. So, yeah. so, 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 we, we want them keep track of the, the primary school. Just repeat the name. Oh, Don Robin Primary. Don Robin Primary, and this, that's at the same one on Washington Boulevard. Yes, so. yes exactly, exactly. Excellent, yeah, excellent. When I was, keep going. When I was in the Don's class, when I was at Don Robin <laughs> Primary, I was in the Don's Grade One class, the Don's Grade Two class. The, I mean, I was always in the Duns class. I was never in anything. So if you had a sixth grade, uh, it would be six, I don't know, what, six, one, two, three. I was like in six, four, or six, five, or something like that. Mm -hmm. So always in Duns class. But yeah. I could read very well, and I could do poetry, and I could sing. Back in, I can't sing now, but back in those days, I could hold a tune until they tell me I couldn't hold it anymore. So, um, so after finishing Spanish Town Secondary, where I did very, very well academically and leadership-wise. Mm -hmm. I got a special scholarship now to go to St. Andrew Technical High School in a trades program. So the purpose of the trades program now is for you to master 
a trade. My trade was going to be electronics. So I went there to do electronics. Wow. Um, in my first day at school, the physics teacher didn't show up. First day. No physics. I said, well, go on. They said, no, the physics teacher didn't show up. So I immediately organized the class. I said, okay, class, take out your book. That time we're using a physics book called Abbott. I said, take out your book, class. And I prepared a lesson plan and I started teaching physics to the rest of the class. I and, said, I, 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 I will slow you down now. Yes, and this um, is the same, same individual that yes. your father gave up on you. Yes. Um, one set at so, the society say it down, so nothing good can come off you. Yes. But the chain started because the eye first realized how important a certain journey that you are now embarking on will be. Absolutely. And so I started teaching this class um, every morning uh, that we're supposed to have a physics lesson. I'm teaching, and a fellow named Mr. Roden, um, he was the head of the trades program. He kept hiding there in a concrete column and watching me every morning. Mm -hmm. um, I would organize the class, I would teach the lesson, I give them assignments, I mark their assignments, and in concept, you come here. Who give you permission to teach? I said, well, nobody, but since we don't have a teacher, I figure I might as well I just fill in until um, he said, follow me. And he took me upstairs to Isaac Henry. Isaac Henry now is one of the most revered principal in the country. <laughs> a very big, big trapping fellow with a very heavy voice. Yeah. And he said, he said, who give you permission to teach over there, Mr. Patterson? <laughs> said, well, you know, there's no teacher in us, so I just decided to try to. He said, go for your bag and your book. And that very day, he transferred me to the regular side of the school, the technical side, where you know people pass regular exams to go there. This was a special trade side. Oh. So now they put me up on the other side. But I want to tell you something. When I was leaving Spanish Town Secondary, a teacher that was there said to me, she said, see you, you think you are very bright, but now you're going to go to a school where they have really bright children. And you're going to see how not bright you are. I said, oh. All right. Well, on then. So, 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 so no far we know, kind of, maybe we start life in the 80s, some 70s, 60s. Yes. Technical schools used to have two sections, yes, sir? No, in not all of them. In this particular one, okay. which, is the, which is one of the most advanced of the all the technical schools, they had two sections. They had a trade section, which is a kind of a second chance section for for the brightest secondary school students to come now and, and kind of polish off a skill, whether yeah. it is machine shop or electrical or electronics or woodwork or masonry. So that's, that's so it's over one side. It's not with the regular students though who have passed technical entrance See. on on that side. So it's a smaller section. So I was over there initially and then now uh, within about three months, I was transferred from there to the technical side because they thought that I had exception to go to UTEC to study engineering um, at the end. So, needless to say, I was able to overcome those early hurdles and prove to myself and to those who thought otherwise right. that, you know, I could do something with my head as well as my hand, you know. So... That closed the chapter on my high school, secondary school years. Uh, I then went on to UTEC where I studied electrical power engineering. Mm -hmm. uh, there I was elected twice the debating society um, president and won the national award for the debating competition for the Kiwanis, uh, Kiwanis Club and um, started the associate investors group. What I did with that group, I brought together about 20 or so students from different disciplines, you know, architecture, engineering, computer science, commerce, teacher education, dietetics, and brought them together. And I, I taught them, after teaching myself, how to pick stocks. At that time, the Jamaica Stock Exchange was just coming into its own. And so I, I taught them the value mm -hmm. of looking at companies from different perspectives analyzing their financial statements, 
analyzing their performance, looking at the industry in which they operated, the product, the product mix, and how the market is reacting to it. And based on those indicators, making stock picking decisions. Right. Through that process, we sent a lot of people through school. We earned a lot of money and paid for tuition and books. And I didn't need the money for that because I had a full scholarship. But I, I enjoyed studying money and understanding markets and finance, even though I was an engineering student. So um, I got a straight A for computer systems and programming from start to finish. I did very well in industrial administration. So my business side was already kicking in, even though I was um, uh, majoring in electrical power engineering. So, so, so slow it down now. So from yes. stats days yes. to University of Technology. Yes. All right. We 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 we'll skip over a, a little part. We we'll, want uh, focus a little more. So we have a rewind the team. Yes. It would have seemed, based on how me I hear the I expound and express that some Alico syndrome catch on from the eye will catch most of it as Jamaicans, which is um, mommy and daddy make love over there, so around us or wherever. Mommy, I see if belly start show daddy gone somewhere else. Most of the responsibility left by mommy. Oh, 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 is that? Am I right in it or am I miss out any part? Or... That's exactly it. I mean, yeah, my my mother, um, uh, when she she got pregnant with me, I was her third child. Uh, she had two children prior uh, mm. with a previous relationship, uh, the same father for the other two children. And then um, that didn't work out, uh, unfortunately, uh, for her. And then I came into the picture um, as her last child at the time and my father had nothing to do with me I didn't meet him until I was around nine years old uh, the first time I met him and then I went to live with him at 11 um, so when, I started yeah. when I have a reason like you and him because from I can hear you now a lot of way how the method or the tactics or the strategy you use to express we are meditate inside. I it not just come through when you are adults. I can hear that you could have, you did have a certain level of reasoning from your picnic. Yeah, man. You and him ever have no vibe when you, know, you try to overstand how he must see things? No, he's not the kind of person who would sit down and have those kind of conversations. He was a very bright man. His father died when he was 12 years old and he had to kind of you know, make life on his own. So he learned, he's a street smart fellow, business savvy. Um, he went to stats as well, sent himself to stats to do electrical installation and became Boy. an electrician, a master electrician. What's his name? What, what name? The same name as me, Joseph Patterson. Oh, <laughs> so there is Joe, okay. All right, yeah. Junior, all right. And Ruth mommy, what's Williams. mommy's full name? Uh, Ruth Williams. Ruth Williams. Yes, so she was a factory worker at the time when I was born. And she later did crash program work. And what the name of the factory was she did work? I don't know. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know the name of it. She just I just see that on my birth certificate, she yeah. was listed as a factory worker, but, and he and he was listed as an electrician. Because one of the things why I asked the I, because mm -hmm. some of the you them where exist now, them are is not all the time, but it's easy for them things. Their life start ninety ninety are. You know, yeah, them no. pretty road days where we them did have all along. And you know, a lot of them they know so part of the war for big zinc factory they did so. Yes. Then you yes. did have the free zone free zone yeah. work and all these things. So Absolutely. The I your life journey has show a certain um progress and a pathway where whole heap away as Jamaican is able to relate to that. Mm -hmm. I now I am going to say to you, you may agree, you may not, and that's all right. The eye appear to be the symbolism of righteous of the righteous government, where Revelation tell about in the Bible. Mm. What do I? How do I see that? Well, um, I don't know because it would be it would be a bit um, presumptuous. 
conscious of me to want to ascribe any 